What is a chemical health hazard? It's exposure to a chemical which can affect your health immediately or in the future. Now, you may have to handle something, but you do not have to be exposed to it. They're not the same at all. If you keep chemicals that can harm your health away from your body, and this includes any of the routes into your body, they cannot hurt you. Sometimes that's not as easy as it sounds. Labels and material safety data sheets, specifically the health hazard data and special protection sections, are your most important tools. They'll tell you what hazards you face, what the toxic effects of the substance might be, how to protect yourself by reducing your exposure, and what first aid procedures to follow should you need them. Now, many important terms on labels and material safety data sheets are not everyday ordinary words. Some of them are directed mainly towards specialists, like engineers, firefighters, and industrial hygienists. For example, the words threshold limit value, TLV, or permissible exposure limit, PEL. These values are based on current knowledge about the hazards of the chemical. They tell an industrial hygienist how much of a chemical is allowed in the work area, and they indicate under what conditions a worker can be exposed to it throughout his working life and not be harmed. Most of the terms apply to your work habits and your ability to keep yourself safe. We'll explain a lot of them, but we can't cover them all. If you come across any that you don't understand, find out what they mean. Remember, your safety is your responsibility. Some chemical health hazards harm the outside of the body. Some harm the inside, and some do both. The chemicals likely to cause the greatest immediate harm to the outside of the body, the eyes and the skin, are corrosives. Let's start with them. Corrosives destroy tissue by burning it or cutting off its oxygen or blood supply. Damage is usually painful and may be permanent. The most common corrosives are acids and bases. If you see the word acid, hydroxide, caustic, or alkali as part of a chemical's name or its family name, it is probably a base or an acid. Both bases and acids react with water. Keep all of these substances away from your skin and keep them away from your eyes. Because of the fluid in your eyes, the reaction is usually very powerful and very damaging. Now this is important. You can feel most corrosives burning you immediately, but sometimes their effects are delayed they might not react until you start to perspire. Don't wait for something to hurt to take action. If you come into contact with an acid or base, always take emergency action immediately. Flush your skin and eyes as directed on the MSDS and follow up with any medical attention necessary. If you work with corrosives, follow your company's safety procedures carefully. Never siphon or pipe at a corrosive or any other liquid, for that matter, by mouth. If you have to mix acids with water, always pour the acid into the water, adding the acid slowly so that the water does not heat too fast. The reaction between the acid and water can cause boiling and splashing, so make sure you are protected with the proper protective equipment. And remember, chemicals other than acids or bases can also be corrosive and just as dangerous. Whenever you see the word corrosive on a label, be careful. Now this is a warning you're likely to find on organic solvents like mineral spirits, turpentine, alcohol, acetone, and trichloroethylene. These are well known for causing dermatitis or inflammation of the skin which is one of the most often occurring job-related illnesses. Solvents dissolve the layer of oil protecting our skin. The skin then becomes dry, cracked, and scaly, and easily becomes inflamed or infected. 
Liquids are not the only source of dermatitis. In powder form, compounds containing certain metals like chromium, antimony, arsenic, or beryllium are major skin irritants. Dermatitis can also be caused by an allergy to a chemical. Substances which may cause these allergic reactions are often called sensitizers. Not everyone will be affected, but if you work with them, don't pressure luck and not protect yourself. If you ever do become sensitized to the substance, you'll react to even very small amounts of it for the rest of your life. Once chemicals get into your body, they can cause a variety of acute or immediate and chronic long-term injuries. Sometimes the damage occurs very slowly, over a period of many years. Chemicals enter the body through the nose and mouth by breathing or inhalation, through the skin and eyes by absorption, and through the mouth when you are eating or talking. On a label or MSDS, this route is called ingestion or swallowing. As you can see here, all three routes lead to the bloodstream. Inhalation is by far the most common and usually the fastest route into the body. You have to breathe. Large dust particles are trapped by the hairs and lining of the nose, but smaller dust, along with fumes, mists, vapors, and gases, can pass into the lungs. That's why respirators fitted for each of these particle sizes and specific chemicals are so important. If you're exposed to extremely irritating gases like ammonia, nitrogen dioxide, chlorine, or phosgene, you'll know it pretty quickly. They form acids and bases when they contact the moisture in your throat and lungs. Try to take only very shallow breaths until you can locate an emergency escape respirator or an exit from the area. Now, if you notice an unusual odor in the air, pay attention to it it might indicate the presence of a hazardous chemical. And if the odor seems to disappear, that does not necessarily mean that the chemical is gone. Your sense of smell can deaden or fatigue rapidly, and you'll be unable to detect that odor even if it is getting stronger. You cannot always trust your sense of smell. And if you are foolish enough ever to rely on your nose to detect a toxic substance, you're making a big mistake. Many toxic gases have no odor. That's one reason why it's important to know about the processes going on around you and what toxic chemical byproducts could result. For example, you've got to know that carbon monoxide is often produced around burning. So expect to find it in exhaust from gasoline-powered forklifts, furnaces with dirty filters, anywhere burning is taking place. Solvent vapors, and even gases like carbon dioxide, argon, and freon, which are not considered major health hazards, have killed people in unventilated areas. Never enter a confined or low-lying area without first checking for oxygen content and for any toxic or flammable vapors you suspect might be there. Terms like CNS depressant or causes narcosis, on a material safety data sheet mean that the substance can have a strong effect on you. You might feel dizzy, drunk, or disoriented. Some organic solvent vapors can interfere with your judgment, make you very sleepy, and cause you to have an accident. They can also paralyze your breathing system and kill you. Not all the effects of inhaling toxics are immediate. Some chemicals slowly react in the lungs to cause a condition called pulmonary edema. The lungs fill with fluid until the person can no longer breathe. Once a person has been rescued from a gas exposure, keep him quiet. Remember, the effect of a gas may not show up for several hours. Inhalation is only one route chemicals can take into the body. An often ignored route of exposure is absorption of chemicals through unbroken skin. It's hard to believe, but think a minute. When you sweat, fluid inside your body comes out through your skin. So does oil. Everywhere a hair grows is a passage through the skin. 
chemicals enter your body through these many surface openings. Now just below the surface of your skin are millions of tiny blood vessels which provide the flow of blood to the skin. If you've ever nicked yourself while shaving, you know about them. When chemicals pass through the skin, they are absorbed into these blood vessels and enter the bloodstream. Mercury can be readily absorbed through the skin. Watch out for organic solvents and other toxic liquids, vapors, and gases that can pass through the skin. Another method of industrial exposure is by ingestion. You can swallow toxic metal dust that may be in the air. Chemicals that enter through the mouth take longer to get into the bloodstream. If you ingest toxic chemicals at work, you may not feel sick until later. If you work around chemical solids like lead or lead compounds or other toxics, don't carry the dust into the lunch or break areas where you can eat it or smoke it. Be very careful to wash your hands before eating. By now you should know what hazards you face and their toxic effects. What do you do if you or a co-worker is exposed to toxic levels of a substance? Each situation is different and you have to exercise good judgment about how best to proceed. But here are some general guidelines. The faster you stop exposure to a chemical, the less the chance of permanent damage. The sooner trained medical personnel arrive, the better. If someone has ingested a toxic substance, call a poison control center or other emergency service. If you know what the substance is, you can follow the instructions on the label or a material safety data sheet. But always call for medical advice too. If you've got a chemical on your skin or in your eyes, use the eye wash or emergency shower immediately, even if it doesn't burn or hurt. Experts agree that the faster you can wash a chemical out of your eyes or off your skin, the smaller your chance of injury. Use plenty of water and rinse for at least 15 to 20 minutes. If you spill a chemical on you, begin showering before you remove any protective clothing. Continue to remove your clothing as you stay under the shower 15 to 20 minutes. Be sure all the chemical is out of your hair and off your face before you remove your goggles. You don't want the chemical to run down into your eyes. When you use an eye wash, hold your eyes open with your hands and roll them around to get water to all parts exposed to the chemical. If a person is overcome by toxic vapors or gases, get him to fresh air as quickly as possible. If he has stopped breathing, use artificial resuscitation if you know how. And call for medical personnel. Now if you see your buddy go into a tank or a pit, and pass out, don't rush in to get him, or you'll be dragged out too. By all means, get him out, but put on a supplied air respirator first. Know where rescue equipment is kept and how to use it. If medical attention is required, either on site or at a hospital, a copy of the appropriate material safety data sheet can provide useful information to medical personnel. Of course, the best thing is never to have to use first aid because you protected yourself and avoided exposure in the first place. The key to protecting yourself is matching the protection to the hazard. Ventilation helps keep chemical dust, fumes, and vapors away from your breathing zone. Make sure your ventilation system is always in good working condition. That fans, motors, filters, and vents are clean and well-maintained. Choosing respirators requires a thorough knowledge of specific hazards. Only people who have been trained, tested, and certified should wear them. What we're giving you here are a few general guidelines. If you're working around corrosive or metal dust, wear a dust mask. In a really dusty area, you can end up eating dust just by opening your mouth to talk. If you're working around mists, Make sure your mask will protect 
against mists. Make sure your mask creates a good seal around your mouth and nose and change it when it wears out. It's a filter and like any filter, it can get too clogged to work correctly. If you're around metal fumes, wear a fume respirator. A dust mask won't protect you. Fumes are so small, they can pass right through a dust filter. If dust filters won't stop fumes, they certainly won't stop vapors or gases either. But there are some combination dust fume or dust vapor respirators on the market. When you use a cartridge respirator, match the cartridge to the acid or solvent you are using. Most cartridges have a rating on them, like 50 parts per million. Don't wear them in an area with an exposure level above the stated rating. Replace the cartridges at recommended intervals or at the first sign of any odor or taste of the vapor. None of the types of respirators discussed so far should be used when the chemical has no odor to aid in its detection. You have no way of knowing when the mask or canister starts to wear out. Most important, none of these will work in an oxygen deficient environment. If the atmosphere is toxic or oxygen deficient, use an air supplied respirator. Self-contained and airline respirators allow you to go into areas where the chemical cannot be detected by odor or sight. As with any other safety device, keep respirators well maintained and ready for immediate use. An empty cylinder of air, a leaking hose, or a poor fitting mask won't be much good in that vapor filled tank you're cleaning. Respirators protect the nose and mouth and the eyes if you have a face mask but a respirator won't protect your skin. That's where protective clothing comes in. For corrosives, you'll need a rubber apron, rubber gloves, and rubber acid boots or shoes. Make sure your pants legs are outside your boots. You don't want any corrosives running down inside them. Leather absorbs corrosives and can keep them in contact with your skin without you realizing it. Once shoes have been contaminated, they have to be thrown away. If you work with solvents, rubber gloves may not protect you. Remember, solvents dissolve things, and many can dissolve or soak into rubber. Check the MSDS for the proper gloves to be used. Vapors can also soak into personal items, such as cigarettes and gum, without your knowing it. Put a contaminated cigarette to your lips and you could wind up ingesting or absorbing toxic materials. Clothing can absorb a chemical or its vapors and keep the chemical on your skin even after you've stopped working with it. In this demonstration, one cloth has absorbed solvent vapors, the other has not. They look alike, but I think you'll soon see they're not. You should change clothes after handling any type of hazardous material. And speaking of changing, dust contaminated clothing has a hazard of its own. If you wear at home, you expose your family to the dust. Leave contaminated clothing at work. While you're in a hazardous area, don't remove your protective clothing for any reason. Lifting a face piece to scratch your nose or lifting your goggles to wipe away sweat won't take long but in that amount of time, you could be splashed with an acid or breathe a toxic gas. Protect your eyes with a proper eye protection. Safety glasses may be fine in a machine shop, but they won't stop an acid from running into your eyes. Wear chemical goggles for protection against splashes. And if you need more protection, add a face shield. Now, we couldn't possibly cover everything you need to know about chemical health hazards. Special situations at your plant will require special in-plant rules. But we have told you a great deal. Now it's up to you to put this information into practice. I'm Dave Brown for Teletrain.